thank you everybody and welcome to this presentation and to watch this video about hyperspectral imaging for the food industry. Before to start, I would like to thank the organizing committee to give us like this opportunity to present our product in those difficult times, even when everything is online that we cannot go on public. So thanks to them. This presentation is about hyperspectral imaging for the food industry. I would like to introduce you our new product, which is Speckim One. Already last year, in 2020, I was presenting the use of hyperspectral imaging for the meat, but here the highlight will be more about Speckim One. But before to go into the topic here about Speckim One, I would like to give few words about Speckim. Speckim it is a world leader about hyperspectral imaging. We are making hyperspectral cameras and also systems. The company has been established in 1995, so it means 25 years ago, by three young guys who are still working at Speaking. And as you can see, we have expanded. We are not three anymore, but now we are 70 employees and we have new offices widespread all around the world. In the US, we have two, one in Detroit and also one in New Jersey. In Finland, we have the main headquarter and also the CEO base in Helsinki. We have also in Barcelona an employee. And finally, in Asia, in Shanghai, we just opened a new office. About the context. Quality control is crucial, especially for the food industry. You want to keep your branding high. You want to have a good reputation that you have gained hardly over the year and you want to keep it high. So quality control is important and you want to detect if you have some contaminants which are occurring during your production, during your production process. Contamination, it would be by foreign object, pieces of plastic, pieces of food, which should not be part of what you have in your plate when you eat meat. And also substances, it could be machinery oil, but also feces, as an example. Also, another part of the quality control is not only contaminant, but you want to be sure that what you sell is matching with what is labeled. So if you say you want to produce some meat with 20% of fat, it needs to have 20% of fat, but not 25 of 30. So here, hyperspectral imaging could be used for that, for, could be used for this as well. Also, you want to be sure that the right kind of meat is provided. You don't want to sell to, to give horses if, for example, you want to produce sheep. So this kind of thing is important. Some other things need to be controlled. For example, the freshness, for example, for fish fillet or for the meat, and also the pH, which can have an impact for the conservation. All of this to make a really accurate quality control to keep your branding really, really high. The novelty here about hyperspectral imaging, it is a combination of spectroscopy and imaging. So that means like you have an image and for each pixel, you can have spectroscopic information. This method is contactless. So that means you cannot really contaminate by the method by itself. It is non-destructive. It is automated fast, there is no need for maintenance, and there is no hazardous substances or, let's say, uh, radiation, which could uh, in, in affect basically your industry and environment. So for example, here we don't use X-rays, for instance. The hyperspectral camera is working in a really simple way. It is a line scan device, and each pixel of the line measuring independent spectral information, and it measures somehow the reflected light compared to the incoming light. And then, by measuring those spectral signatures, it is possible to identify different type of component, component different type of material, because each material, they are made uh, of different molecules, which have different structure, and then each material and component, they have different spectral signatures, so then it's possible to identify them. The so same way as humans are identified with fingerprint. So this is basically how the system looks like. FX camera, illumination, and the spectral signature is measured and then identified. Here you can see two examples of studies which has been made. In this slide, there is the first one which is more for quantitative analysis. Quantitative analysis, it means that here we looked at some minced meat and then we wanted to estimate or to measure with a hyperspectral camera the fat content as well as the moisture level. And here, as you can see, really accurate prediction has been made on these samples. But the good thing is that it's not only an estimation at a point, but because it combines spectroscopy with imaging, you can also see the distribution. 
And here you can really see the power of hyperspectral imaging. It could be used for quantitative data analysis, but also for qualitative data analysis. As you can see on this slide, you can also separate not only uh, features based on their proportion in a sample, but also if you have A or B. For example, here on this piece of meat, you could separate what is the meat, what is the bone, and what is the fat. So basically, you could also determine like this where you have contaminants, could be the bone, for example, or the fat, or a piece of wood, or a piece of plastic, because those have really clear and distinctive spectral signatures. HSI for the industry, we really see some assets. You know, it's very accurate because it's based on spectroscopy, which has been used already for decades. And small objects can be detected, so it's really accurate in that respect. It is very flexible because with the same camera, different substances of material can be detected. And you can tune, for example, your camera somehow for an application one day and to another application another day. This is the flexibility of hyperspectral imaging. And it is fast also. This is a line scan device. You have your sample based on the conveyor belt and it can move quickly like this underneath. But until now, we have noticed some challenges. When you wanted to incorporate or to employ hyperspectral imaging within your industry, the chemometrics was a hurdle. So for example, it was always difficult to convert the spectra into, you know, the value you are interested at, fat level, moisture level, or contaminant. That was a hurdle. The second one was a slow integration because you needed to get acquainted, to have some calibration, and so there was not really software ready to do this kind of thing. So the integration was slow. And you know, there was little know-how available about hyperspectral imaging, but all of this is going to change because here we come with Speckim1. Speckim1, this is a new Speckim platform dedicated for hyperspectral imaging for the industry. You have all in one. You have the camera, you have the processing platform, and you also have like this, the, 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 the output, the processing software. So everything can be together. So how does it work? Basically, you have the hyperspectral camera, which is giving you some data. Then you have the processing platform, which is then converting those data into classes, what you are interested in. And then you have the processing software where you can build your model. If I go a bit more into the details, there is a Speckim FX10 and the FX17. Those two cameras can be used with a Speckim one. The FX10 is between 400 and 1000 nanometers. The second one, the FX17, is between 900 and 1700 nanometers. The first one could be used for the meat industry, especially, for instance, for the fish industry, where you want to monitor the freshness, but you also want to detect some contaminants, like the nematode, you know, those worms you don't want to find in your plate. And the FX17 will be really suitable to measure the fat level, the moisture content, and also, you know, like different types of contaminants. Those two cameras could be used with the Speckim1. Then there is a cube, which is the Speckim1 platform, let's say that way, the processing platform. It's based on the Jetson NVIDIA uh, Xavier uh, processing platform, I could say it that way, GPU. Um, here, basically, it takes as an input the data from the FX camera and then it's running a runtime and it gives you as an output the classification A, B and C so that you understand you don't need to think yourself about making the classification. It does it for you. It has been designed in a way that it could really be used for the industry with very, very low latency and almost no jitter or really well controlled. And finally, the last piece of the puzzle, if I could say it that way, it is the Speckim Inside, which is a software where you can build uh, your model and your application. Here it could be processed offline, and then you can convert your offline model into an online runtime, which can then be loaded in turn into the Speckim Cube. But I think I've been talking enough, uh, maybe even too much, I don't know. But here I would like to show you, we have this uh, beautiful piece of meat and a bit of fat you can see, but let's see what the Speckim inside can do with this. Maybe there will be pieces of plastics.
So here you can see the demonstration. Basically, a data set with the mid has been recorded and then I can open it with the training uh, user interface. Here we have different possibility to set some region of interest. We could then be used in turn to teach the model what is what. So we started here to take part of the meat, then part of the fat. And we can see already with the NIR image that here there are parts which are completely different from the rest. You can see from the spectra as well that they are different. So we tell the system what is the meat, the fat, this part and the background. Of course, we want to have them sorted with different colors. So the meat will be sorted in red. The fat will be sorted in green. And finally, the contaminant here will be sorted in blue. The background here, we will just sort it as black because, you know, that doesn't mean to be anything really special. Then it's possible once you have been training the model, teaching the model where is what, you can train it and you can test it. And already from here, you can see this type of prediction where you can highlight what is the meat, what is the, the fat, and what is the contaminant. Also, to highlight the flexibility of the method, if we decide that the fat is actually something good, we don't want to sort it as something different, but we want to sort it alone, uh, somehow along with the meat, it's possible to have it that way, and then we can really highlight what is here, the contaminant. Okay, so you have seen the demo, so a beautiful, a beautiful piece of meat, we could identify different types of contaminants. Speaking one, you understand, is working that way. So basically here you have the FX camera, which is connected to the cube. You can acquire some data, then you can process those data with inside the software that you had the demonstration. You do it offline, you make a model. Once you are satisfied with your model, you convert it into an application that you load again into the cube as a runtime again, and then you can get as an output somehow like the classification in real time, for example, like this of the contaminant. So this is really the way it is working. You have the FX camera, the platform, and the output, which is ready for you for your PLCs, for instance. Conclusion. The Specking one is here to enable faster integration for the spectral imaging within your industry. Uh, Specking inside allows you to create material sorting, streams, spectroscopy knowledge. You don't need to have those because the user interface makes it in a way that you don't need to be a guru about uh, hyperspectral imaging and statistics. Uh, it's also like a high performance system. So there you can see the latency is really, really short, no jitter. So you have the possibility really to use it uh, for your industry. You also have the capability to set different region of interest, spectrally speaking, with, um, with your device. So if you are not interested in reading the full spectral range, you can focus on some band which make the processing even faster. But the most important is that this platform is here to make the integration easy for you. If you have any question, please do not hesitate to contact us either by visiting our webpage, www.speckim.com, or by sending email to my colleague Jeffrey Oleski, who is based in New Jersey, or to me, who is based in Finland. Then we can come back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that was interesting for you, and I wish you to have a good day.